Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Today I have a rather summary set for you all. I've just had so many requests about this crop top. Every time I show this footage from Palm Springs I get questions about this little crop top and it's actually just so easy to make both the pattern and the top itself so I thought I would go ahead and show you and then today I'm going to make a matching wrap skirt to pair with this inspired by this Vogue pattern. And I have a lovely lightweight rayon in my stash to make this set out of today. Let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. So here we are with some bear paper and my all-in-one bodice block front and back. These I make from the regular bodice block and you can see me convert the regular block into these all-in-one sleeve versions here on the channel in this video. But I am going to keep this little dart here but I'm going to shorten this here on the front by two inches from the center front and the side like so and then I'm going to come on an inch from the neckline here because this has the highest possible neckline right now and draw that down into a v-neck just trying to keep in mind where the apex is and uh all that jazz so it's not too low because it'll be low once you tie the top anyway so it's better to start it out like a little bit higher than you think you want it because when you tie the top it becomes quite a v anyway so hopefully that makes some sense here i'm just going to continue this two inch crop line here you can make this a little bit longer if you want um you don't have to make it cropped actually you probably can get away with not cropping it but once you tie it again it will come up in the front between the bust so we'll do different crop tops some other time as well but here I just have like this extension here. You can see this is my pattern from last year when I was making that palm tree print one. Um, so I was just analyzing what I did last time because I was pretty sure it was just pretty easy. Um, so I came out about 11 inches from the center front here. And I'm going to go ahead and tilt that up about an inch like so. So it just tilts up a little bit. Basically you're just drawing on a triangle shape extension from the center front. Um, and so I'm just drawing that up to the neckline and connecting that with a curve. So, you know. Uh, it's basically the same, uh, just with a, a, a triangle extension along the center front. Now you could, of course, move this dart around if you wanted to, including moving it into the fullness that gets tied at the front. I'm just going to leave this dart right where it is. In order to do so, I am just going to trim this with the dart folded closed with the fullness towards the center front like I like to do my darts. But I'm just going to leave that little dart there. It's going to be underneath the bust. It won't be very noticeable, especially if you're doing this in a print. And uh, the little bit of sewing right there gives a tiny bit of structure underneath the bust. Uh, and otherwise this top has none so you know don't mind but this just has the all-in-one sleeve little tiny sleeve over here like so and, and and that's the tie front top front um this is the grain line this is the original center front here and uh that's that of course you could cut something like this on bias if you wanted to have like stripes going in diagonal or something like that and uh here i will go ahead and do the back which unfortunately is a lot easier that's right so um we don't even have the little triangle extension so i'm just going to trace this um, I have the line drawn on the center back here because I do not need any seam allowance along the center back. I'm going to cut this on the fold because, of course, this ties front uh, ties shut in the front, so I don't have to do any closure here in the back. This can be cut on the fold along the center back here. I've drawn in my back dart as well. I need to make sure that my shoulder seams will match up with the front, so my neckline needs to come out a little bit. I can grab my front pattern, make sure that matches up with the shoulder like so. Let me go ahead and just make sure that I have this cropped the same amount. Just make sure that I'm taking two inches off the center back and two inches off the side. That way it matches up with the front, of course, and I can go ahead and cut this out like so. Once again, I'm going to fold my dart shut here to get the correct shape along the crop of it all, I suppose. Just kind of draw in two inches. It's a very subtle curve, but it is technically still curved because the body is curved, not straight. Facts. My body is never very straight at all, actually, in, in, in general. Um, happy Pride Month, everyone. This is the tie front top back 2022. And so I have my front and my back ready to go here. They match up at the shoulder. In fact, if you wanted to layer these without the seam allowance and uh, tape that shut and cut this out all in one like that, you could. Um, but I find it easier to cut the back on a fold, center back on a fold. But now let's start working on this simple wrap skirt pattern. Of course, like the easiest sort of sarong style skirt is just to make like a sarong, like a large rectangle that you can wrap around your waist um but this is a more like structured kind of pencil skirt version of a wrap skirt so i'm just taking my pencil skirt pattern you can see me make this pattern here on the channel in this video and i'm mirroring it along the center front but i still will draw in my darts here i'm going to be drawing the front curve of the like overlap of the skirt here you'll see that in a second but i need a full front to do anything asymmetric so that's what i've done here if i go ahead and cut that out then i can draw in the curve along the front hem here just keeping it the same length as my skirt usually is, which is 29 inches, along one side and then tilting it up on the other to a, just about, I don't know, maybe not even mid thigh, like lower thigh here. 
like so. And I'm going to trace another copy of this because that is going to be the under layer of the wrap on the front. And I'm going to need an over layer on the wrap of the front. So let me just trace a copy of this darts and everything because I need two of these. One will be the left and one will be the right. One will be under, one will be over basically for the front of my skirt here, but still marking in my darts. I'll need those. There are ways to eliminate darts, of course. This is just, you know, a very simple skirt where I didn't want to have to do any muslins or figure anything else out. And so um, keeping my pencil skirt as a base is a good way to do that. So you can see how the underlayer will underlay this, if that makes any sense. I'm going to draw a curved line that starts higher on one side of the hip here on the high side of the skirt, goes through the dart points on that side, and then swoops a little bit lower on the other side. And then I'll do another one below it that, of course, doesn't interact with the darts anymore. And then I'm going to create a little bit of a flare here from this lower section. I'm just taping on some paper here. You can make a big circle cut flare. You can do a little bit of a flare. You can do no flare at all. It's up to you. Yeah, you know? this is just the little bit of swoopy swoop action going on to the front of the skirt here. And actually, I decided that the angle was honestly too much and I didn't want this to fold back as much. If your fabric is the same on the front and the back, of course, this looks a little bit better if it floops around. But because my fabric was um, like a little bit lighter on the back, I didn't want this to flap open a lot. So I just have a slight bit of flare here like so. Now I can go ahead and cut open these large swoops across the front of the skirt here. This just adds a bit of a swag effect in the front and I can use it to close these darts up here. So on this side, I can close my waist darts or my darts up into the waist because I've made this go through that point. You've seen me do this before in my um, sparkle skirt video here on the channel. So I can put a card out to that as well. If you'd like to see another version of a kind of sarong-ish style, um, like ruffled, well not ruffled, um, like bustled in the front skirt. So you can see that over there. But I'll just fill this all in with spare paper and then I will cut the other one out and do the same. To cut this edge, I'm going to basically fold that pleat I just added in closed. It's kind of like a asymmetric pleat. Fold that closed, cut off the edge because that is how it's going to need to be folded in the fabric as well. And then once again, I will fill in this second one. How much fullness am I adding, you might ask? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm eyeballing it, you know, like five or six inches. Mm. Uh, you can make small pleats. The larger they are, the deeper the like swags in the front. So I'm not measuring it, as you can see. Once again, I'm just going to cut this by folding it closed and cutting off this line here. And this area here, I will finish with some uh, bias tape later. So you'll see me do that once we get to sewing this, buddy. But this is the outer front. And I'm just going to use the regular pencil skirt back with that. So I just already have a tracing of that. It's just the same one that from the pencil skirt video. Um, it matches up with everything in the front still, so no problem there. But I was just cutting everything out of this palm print rayon poplin, and then I did cut out a layer uh, for the top to be fully lined. So I cut this out in a black voile, cotton voile that had been pre-washed as well. So I'm just marking my darts on that to be the lining for this project, for this little tiny crop top. I mean, it's hardly a crop top. It's like almost a bra top. It's got like, it's full coverage in the shoulder and upper arm. And yet it's very scandalous otherwise <clears throat> in the front. I guess for me, since I'm just not used to having low necklines, it feels very scandalous. But I'm just transferring my darts. I've poked holes in my pattern using that little awl there you see on the right hand of the screen next to my scissors. It's just a little pokey, like oversized needle tool, a bodkin-ish kind of thing. Um, an awl that you use to poke through paper or fabric. Um, very good for making eyelets, for example. You're pushing threads aside as opposed to punching through them, which is useful, and uh, retains strength in fabric. So an awl is a very useful tool and very inexpensive tool to have in your sewing room. And I use it to poke holes in my patterns to be able to transfer my dart markings onto my uh, fabric, usually using colored pencil, sometimes tailor's chalk, depends on what I have sitting next to me closest. Occasionally, I will even use a white gel pen if my fabric is like really textured and the pencil isn't showing up. Sometimes I will use a gel pen um, if something's really thick and it will never show on the outside. Sometimes I just use my Crayola washable markers. That's right. I'm not afraid. Um, <clears throat> if it's like a black polyester brocade, it's not like the color is ever going to bleed into it or anything like that. You're not going to see that. So sometimes it's safe, but you do what feels right to you, honestly. Yeah. I'm just transferring my darts onto all the pieces here, including onto the skirt pieces as well. I'm going to sew these kind of off and on. I'll be sewing the crop top and the skirt in the same evening <laughs> here in my sewing room. So I'm switching between the two as I go here, but I've got this lovely palm print. It's kind of like a mauve purple, like a jewel purple color and gold on black with a little bit of blush pink going on. Of course, blush pink, not usually a color of mine, 
but I thought that the rich purple and gold were fun. A little bit different. I like a leafy print in any colorway, honestly. But I'm going to pin all my darts and set everything next to the machine, basically. Because this top is going to be fully lined, by the way, I'm not surging anything. Um, and the skirt, the only thing I surged on that was the side seams, I believe. Because everything else gets encased in either a hem or some bias tape. I hope you all enjoyed this week's earlier small video about our new family members here in the house. We, we may have adopted some kittens here in the house. Um, <laughs> we were supposed to get two kittens, but um, my mom and I went to go visit the kittens at their foster home, and the foster mom also had a uh, third kitten who was two weeks older from a different litter, and my mom heard him meow and instantly fell for him, so we ended up coming home with three kittens. So I was like, do you want to ask dad? Nah. So she just brought home three kittens without even consulting anybody. I mean, she said to me, do you think it's okay? And I was like, you, I, you are asking the wrong person because in my world, the more kittens, the merrier. So as sad as I am to have lost my babies, my Cleo and my Gunny, um, I lost Gunny last month, um, very recently, but our house just felt too, too empty and everyone in my house loves cats. So we were, had a lot of love to give and there was no cats left to leave it to. And it was just making us more sad, honestly. So we have adopted three kittens and now we are very busy with three kittens. Luckily, there are a few of us to go around so we can all be playing with them at the same time when they need to play. And they're all very cute. Um, so I have a video here on the channel that I put up earlier this week as I'm recording this to uh, show you, introduce the new babies. We have two little boys and a little girl. I am marking where that, uh, those two pleats on the side of the skirt need to go as well, by the way. Just marking that with colored pencil so I know where to fold that later, and you'll see me do that later. But now, over on the machine, I can go ahead and sew all of my darts. That's right. I had to mark a bunch of darts, mostly because that skirt has so many of them. Um, and now I have to sew a bunch of darts. So here I am doing that. Start at the large end of the dart, sew off the tip, trim my threads here, tie it shut, and trim again. Um, this is just how I was taught to sew darts and how I always have always done it. So there are many ways to sew a dart. You do whatever feels best to you and has worked well for you in the past. Um, this is just how I was taught freshman year of fashion design school, how they wanted us to do a dart. And that's how I've been doing it ever since. They taught us a couple different methods, but this seemed to be the preferred situation, at least at the school I was at, which of course I've been to many fashion schools. And that's why I always say, like every method I've ever been taught, they said, this is the only way to do this. And every single method at every different school was different. So clearly everyone has very strong opinions, but not me. I say, do, do it if it works for you, honestly. Yeah. We're all just trying to make nice clothes. And if what you're doing results in that, I see no issue with it. Why be stringent about these things? I do not know. But I can take all those over to the ironing board now and press all those darts. Again, another contentious issue. I press my darts towards the center back and towards the center front. I was using a new iron here and it had like some sort of, it was leaving like a white residue on this fabric. I don't know what that was about. I think it was actually a finish on the fabric that it maybe was picking up on, I'm not sure. But again, uh, some people press their darts towards the side seams. Some people press them towards the centers. I press mine towards the centers. That's just how I was taught. Again, do you do you. Uh, the only important thing here is to make sure that if you pattern draft them facing one, like intending to have them face one direction, that that's the direction that you use. So don't like pattern draft them with them towards the center and then press them towards the side. That is silly, you yeah? know? Just keep that consistent at least. And yes, this is a new iron down here. I'm still not like 100% on how I feel about it. It gets very, very hot. I actually burned my like stomach. Uh, like it burned, the steam burned through my shirt while I was standing at the ironing board and ironing. So it gets very hot. And the main reason that I wanted a new iron was because the other one, although very nice, or it was supposed to be very nice, leaked water on things. And so my main goal here is to have one that doesn't leak water and it hasn't yet. So I suppose I am pleased with that. But here I am pinning my shoulder seams and side seams for both the outer layer and the lining layer of my top. So just pinning that shoulder seam. Of course, it's a nice straight line for me. Love that all in one sleeve. And then I have that little curly side seam, but it's all good. But I can go ahead and take those over the machine here and sew all of that. Again, this top is super easy to put together. I mean, it's just the three pieces for the lining, three pieces for the outside. And then you just bag line the whole thing, pull it through one of the sleeves and then hand finish the sleeves. So you'll see me do that here. Um, it's what you're watching me do, but it is quite simple. Honestly, I think the video makes it seem like it takes longer than it really does. This is definitely something you could do in an evening. No problem. Even if you are newer to sewing. And in this video, I actually filmed before we got the kittens. 
but in the future you will notice that my hands um, have tons of tiny little scratches and nicks from where they've been like play fighting with me. Um, so I have like little tiny scratches and bites from kittens because you know they love to go at a feather and I love to play with them with a feather so or a ribbon or a piece of twine or they love little mice. We have some mice that are half stuffed with catnip but they really like those. So now we um, look like a it's like a family's house where like you know you walk into the living room and most of it is a playroom. We have toys everywhere now because there are little toddler cats around which is just excellent really. But just sewing all of my side seams and my shoulder seams with half inch seam allowance as is usual for me. And I can go ahead and press those over on the ironing board here. Of course this is a curved seam at the underarm here so I'm just going to go ahead and put some clips in that. I'm not worried about that just because it's going to be fully lined and everything anyhow should be no problem. Luckily this fabric didn't want to fray too badly either. It's a poplin so it's pretty finely woven. Um, it's not as loosey-goosey as a um, chalet even though around chalet and this poplin feel about the same honestly. I just feel like this poplin is maybe a, <clears throat> a little bit finer woven which is nice. And my voice is giving out on me. How rude. I'm just going to put those right sides together. Match up my shoulder seams here. This is at the top of the neckline here. And uh, just go around and pin the entire outside edge of this buddy the right sides together, completely bag line this little top. And again, I will pull this through one of the sleeve openings because I can go around the outside edge of this, the neckline, the hem, the front edges, but I can't uh, line the sleeves while I'm doing this. I have to do that separately. So, But it's no problem to do that, especially because in this all-in-one again, it is straight lines, which is nice. Over on the machine, I can go ahead and go all the way around. This is a longer seam. Make sure you have enough bobbin thread before you start it. Otherwise, you will have to stop and start and you will be sad. But once I get to a corner, I leave the needle down, boop, like that, turn, press the foot back down and keep going. That's just how I get around corners smoothly. Of course, I will need to trim those corners before I turn this right side out, but we'll get to that in a minute after I sew all the way around this buddy. So yes, anywhere that it's like quite curved, I'm going to clip and then on the corners, of course, I need to clip this as well, like so, just so that everything will lie smoothly once I turn this right side out, which I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and go around the entire edge of this and just press this. You could, of course, put some understitching in here if you'd like to. Um, I knew that these fabrics were both going to stick to each other pretty well, so I wasn't too worried about them coming unstuck once I ironed this into place. So I'm using a knitting needle in addition to my fingers here to press the corners out the way they need to be, like so. And then I'm going to grab my tailor's ham and just use that as like a harder surface because my ironing board is kind of not great. So I need to get a fancy ironing board next. Now that I have an iron that doesn't leak everywhere, what an idea. But just go around and make sure I have all these edges nice and crisp now that everything is fully bag lined. Lastly for this top, because it is almost finished at this point, ties in the front here of course so that's all the closure we need but I just need to hem these sleeves so I'm turning them in towards the inside both the lining and the outside both the lining and the fashion fabric I suppose is what I want to say Ooh. I'm turning those both a half inch in and then lining that up and then I can slip stitch that area together making sure to pin my side seam under the arm there together and my shoulder seam together and have everything lined up nicely so I just need to slip stitch these shut and then my sleeves will be hemmed cleanly as well and this will all be finished super clean and technically will be completely reversible also. So here I am just slip stitching that taking really quarter inch size stitches. I'm not even taking the smallest of stitches. I'm not worried about it coming undone honestly. I'm just using double thread on a thin needle to do that. And then my top will be finished. So let's start working on the skirt here. I'm just going to pin those pleats, those swags I had put into that one side. So you can see sort of here on the left hand side of the screen, I have that like green colored pencil mark where this pleat needs to go like so. And because I folded the paper in order to cut this edge anyway, it should match up perfectly. And because this edge is going to be kind of loose and hanging in the front, I needed it to be finished nicely. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and encase it in some bias tape that I just made out of some of the scraps of this fabric. I just cut on the 45 degree angle a two inch wide strip to create a small strip of bias tape. I didn't need that much, so 
just needed enough to cover this little edge. I'm going to fold that into double fold bias tape just by eye. I have one of those little doohickey things to fold it for you, but I just do it by eye. Uh, to me, that's it's still faster just to do it myself. But I will just go ahead and sandwich this raw edge of this side of the skirt in that bias tape so that it is finished on both sides nicely. And I'll just stitch this down on the machine. You could, of course, hand stitch this if you wanted to, make a completely invisible finish. Kind of like slip stitch this in here on either side. But I didn't think the machine stitching would be that obvious in this busy print. Over here on the machine, just gonna go ahead and stitch that. Again, with the lightweight fabric, sometimes it's nice to maybe you notice there, I just pulled the threads as I started um, at the start, and that just helps you move thin fabrics under the needle, um, under the presser foot at the start. Sometimes thin fabrics wants to get like pulled into the machine and that's really irritating. So it's useful to hold on to the top and bottom thread when you're getting started. But now that that one side is finished, I can go ahead and sew my side seams, um, sewing the fronts onto the back. So I'm gonna do that now, but I can sew both the sides of the front to the respective sides of the back. Hopefully that makes sense. If you've ever worn a wrapped dress or skirt, I should think it will. Um, but just pinning those in place and I can sew both of them. And you can see, again, that's the only edge that I ended up surging, um, just because this is the only edge that would, would have been raw on the inside. Of course, you could use a French seam and then it wouldn't be anyway. So if you are the type who likes a French seam or like a, I think it's called a flat felt seam, something like that. Usually used for denim, honestly, but you could use it on anything. Um, you could do that to this kind of seam as well. That way everything would be finished on the inside. But I'll just stitch that quickly over here on the machine. Like so. Go ahead and give that seam a quick press where it's curved. I'm using my tailor's ham to press that seam open on the inside. Like so. Same with the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and hem this skirt. Um, of course that hem like curves upwards in the fronts of the skirt. So I need to go along that curve as well. You could hem this with a bias tape. You could hem this with hem tape. You could hem it any way you like. I'm just going to turn it twice into like a sort of narrow hem, about a quarter of an inch hem down here. So I'm just turning this twice again, just eyeballing this as I go around in this delicate rayon fabric. And I'll press this into place and then again, stitch it by machine. I was able actually to pick up a like really cute little folding, like, I don't know, what do they call it? Like a little book style photo frame in brass at the antique mall recently. Um, to put pictures of my Cleo and my Gunny in, my first two kitties that I had for over half of my life, or about half of my life, really. Um, so of course it was trouble, it was having trouble getting used to life without them. Um, so it's good that we have other kitties to love now. Um, but of course my love for them, although they are gone, lives on, sadly. Um, I was looking at a picture of Cleo to compare her markings to our new gray tabby and I just started crying looking at a picture of her. So uh, my mom is very good at like ha looking at pictures and old videos of them. And I'm like, oh no, I, I can't yet. <laughs> um, so I can't really go through my older pictures of my cats yet because it just hurts too much that I can't ever hang out with them again, honestly. But luckily we have now kittens in the house to play with and they're very soft and very cute. Check out my Instagram where I just keep posting in, uh, updates about them because they're too cute. Today, one of the, the little girl kitty her name is Sophia. Um, I was like leaning down to see where she was on the cat tower. I was like leaning down to her level or kneeling and she climbed up over and like kind of put her paws up on my shoulder. And then she just hopped up onto the, my shoulders, like behind my neck and was like mewing in my ear. Um, and she like did it a couple of times. She like walked back onto the cat tower and then jumped back onto my shoulders. And I was like, hello, pirate cat. And so, you know, basically falling in love with the new babies. How I will continue to get any work done it's hard to know. After I finish this video today, I can go and play with them some more. Although they've been very sleepy today. But I do believe that, you know, mostly they eat, sleep, and play, and that's about it, you know. So it's understandable. And they're so cute when they're sleepy, so. They're not allowed it up in our um, bedrooms yet because we don't want them to hide under the bed. So we're, they've got the main floor, but uh, we're not allowing them upstairs yet. But what I'm doing here, <clears throat> instead of rambling about kittens, is I am adding a waistband to the top of this skirt. Now, instead of cutting a waistband that is 31 inches long or whatever my waist measurement would be, I'm cutting one that's extra, extra long so that I'm leaving the ends as ties to be able to wrap this shut and tie it closed. Uh, honestly, I would have liked to have even longer ties, but I only had so much fabric left. 
So these ties will just tie in the back. But you can see I sewed that onto the skirt and then now I'm folding either side of that down like so. This is not a bias cut strip, by the way. This is on the straight grain, so it doesn't stretch too badly. You could interface this as well, but this is just a lightweight little wrap skirt for summertime. I'm not worried about it being fancy and interfaced and couture about it. I'm mostly probably going to be wearing this set over swimsuits or like in a, on a very, very hot play suit kind of day. So it's not really, it's more, it's meant to be, you know, kind of casual. So I'm not worried about interfacing, especially with the wrap skirt. Like if the waist, waistband stretches, it just wraps a little further, which is fine. Yeah. These are the kind of things like, you know, why do we add structure to a waistband so it doesn't stretch out, but in a wrap skirt, eh, who cares? It's fine. So I'm just pinning that shut now, pressing it into place, and then I will, um, top stitch this basically to finish this. Once again, you could slip stitch this all closed. Uh, but you know, again, on a casual summer play suit, just machine stitch it. Again, who is judging you for this? Hopefully no one. Of course, this little tie top is inspired by little kind of pinupy sets from the 1940s and 50s like these anyhow. So this is kind of my original inspiration for doing a shirt like this, uh, a tiny shirt, if we can even call this a shirt, honestly. But you know, I was planning on wearing it the first one in Palm Springs where I feel like you could probably get away with not having many clothes on. It's like 108 degrees there most of the time, you know? But all the way around, same on the other side. And then I will stitch this all down and my little wrap skirt and my little tie top will be all finished. And here is my finished tropical, slightly pinup little crop top and skirt set. Most often in my wardrobe, I would probably wear this if I were to ever actually go on vacation because it is a little bit casual, otherwise just walking around uh, town. Uh, it would be great to throw over a swimsuit for like, you know, lunch down by the pool and then jumping into the pool if you are the sort of person who has that sort of lifestyle, which sounds nice, honestly. But this skirt just ties around the waist. You'll have to just Believe me there, so I can preserve some modesty on this channel. And the top does just tie as well. You can actually make these ties longer if you wanted to attach little, like, uh, not ribbons, but like ties to the end, the same way I did for the skirt. But I'm very happy with this little set. It's actually extremely comfortable because it is so lightweight and would be perfect for the hottest of days when no one wants to throw on an underwire bra anyway, let's face it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this set came together today, and thank you as always for watching. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon, so I'll see you then. Bye.